In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for this wonderful day that you've given us. Lord Jesus, thank you for gathering us here in our midst. Thank you for being present. Holy Spirit, I yield my heart, I yield my mind, I yield my spirit unto you, O Lord. Lord, I do not know what each one of us need here, but you do. I give you complete control of my spirit, of my soul, of my body. But I also pray that all of us present here yield our ears, yield our heart unto you so that the word that is being sown today in our hearts will bring forth a harvest that nudges us in our relationship with you. Help us to grow in love knowing you as a friend, as a counselor, as a helper, as a comforter, as an advocate. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Um, so today I want to dive right into our anchor scripture and then we'll discuss our topic for today. Okay, Kanswala, would you please be able to put John chapter 15, verse 1 to 3? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. You can read it if you'd like. Okay. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yes, so Jesus is our true wine, from whom we receive sap. Now this sap, it nourishes our soul with the living waters of his word entering in us, changing us, renewing our minds. It breaks our old worldly strongholds and creates new godly strongholds with firm foundation on the rock whom we know as Jesus. Our Heavenly Father is a good, good Father. And no one can care and love us like him. Not our friends, not our parents, not our family. His love is unconditional. No matter what we do, he loves us. As any loving father, he disciplines us. Though the cuts from the nippers, like nippers are the tools used to prune the branches, that may hurt, but it's only so that the fruits are more. It says that in verse 2. For an example, um, when a baby is uh, learning to walk, will that baby stand up and you know walk in the first attempt itself? No. No. Will it fall as it tries to walk? Yes. Yes. Is it painful for the child? Yes, and they fall really badly. Yeah. <laughs> and it's also painful for the parent to see. But the parent knows if you don't let the child fall and get up by it by himself. The child is not going to grow, get that confidence. So even though we fall, we can stand. And the word of God tells us, the righteous fall, though the righteous fall seven times, they still get up. And that we are able to do. Why? Because we have our comforter with us. 
a holy spirit so the question here is what is pruning does anyone know pruning is a process where you know uh, the gardener if he's having a garden he's yeah. cutting off the extra growth you know the branches yeah. what is not required all the unnecessary things so that the right. branch can the tree can grow beautifully amen thank you jesus thank you so much for that answer that's right pruning is a procedure to cut off unwanted things or blockages from each branch of the plant which hinders its growth so what does a branch contain it contains a branch contains leaves and fruits now when you see yellow or brown leaf indicates that there is an infection now i want you to think to yourself do you see yellow yellow are the areas which you do which you have not submitted to god fully areas where you experience drifting away from god the holy spirit will convict us and what when he when the conviction comes like okay this is not uh, you've not submitted this under god you're doing this in your own ability what do you feel is irritation you get burnt out because you're doing it in your own strength anyone experience this yes i've experienced it yeah mm -hmm. me too praise god so then you know that you need to bring that area under god's submission and then there are leaves which are brown this areas are dead so the question is are there any areas in your life where you've given up hope a promise you may have received in a different season but weren't able to stand on it because you couldn't see the manifestation so you stopped confessing and believing god to do it he wants you to submit those areas also another thing about plant pruning is that pruning is seasonal plants are pruned right before entering the season of producing fruits not in the midst of the season because at that time they can't grow in season it's time to bear fruits now how does the supply to us this period whatever thing in your life god wants to cut away it may feel like he's snatching it away but remember the thing you cannot let go of easily you have made it an idol and our god is a jealous god he doesn't share us with anything another reason is that he wants to do something greater and give you something better has anyone um, seen this picture on the internet uh, a child who's holding a tiny teddy bear and jesus has one of his hand forward asking the baby to let go why because on the other hand which is behind his back he's holding on to a bigger teddy bear to give to her yeah i don't even see that yeah so only yes. the baby lets it go she'll be able to hold the big teddy bear because she'll need mm -hmm. to use both of her hands and many times god wants to bless us with blessing that we need both our hands to carry but because we hold on to something he is asking to let go of we forfeit our own blessings now see yes, verse 3 it says you are already clean because of the word which i have spoken to you the word of god is sharper than a double edged sword so the day you accept jesus as your lord god and savior the work that it did to make you clean is give you his holy spirit now we are one with the holy spirit and our bodies are his temple so let's learn about this a little deeper through john chapter 2 where jesus is in the temple okay but first uh whoever needs wants making notes um you can write this point down uh, i'll just put it in the chat littering leads to death but pruning leads to disciples that's the first point okay so the point is withering leads to death 
but pruning leads to disciple. Now, what do I mean by death? I mean spiritual death. Now, Adam and Eve, when they disobeyed and ate the fruit, God said they die. They would die. Did they die? Yes, they died. Yes, physically and uh, not physically. Oh, spiritually. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they did <laughs> die spiritually. So, what is spiritual death? Okay, anyone from the would like to answer? What is spiritual death? Separation from God. Yes, correct. Disconnected from the Father because God is spirit and so are we. And just in um, John chapter, I think 4 verse 24, I guess, Jesus says we must worship the Father in spirit and truth. But a person... Now, on the other hand, a person who stays steadfast through the pain, unwavering in their faith in God, becomes a disciple because pruning brings discipline. And without discipline, there's no discipleship. Praise God. Would anyone like to add anything here? Dr. Priya? Praise God. I can say I'm in this season. So it's, my, it's my second day in my master's course. So I'm right, like, you know, just after attending two days of my course, I can say, you know, I see how this place where God has put me away from my comfort zone, away from my home, in a different environment, so many new things to learn, you know, and still hold mm -hmm. on to the truth. I can say it's a very practical experience. <laughs> Thank Praise you, Jesus. God. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit knows it all. Praise God. Praise God. It's got to go. Uh, am I, is my voice audible? Yes, Selena. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Praise God. Okay. Um, would anyone like to read from verse 13? Verse 13 and verse 14 of John chapter 2. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone like to read? I'll read. Okay. Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves, and the money changers doing business. Thank you. Okay. So now, is this what is supposed to be done in a temple? No. Absolutely not. It's an abomination. Now, the teachers of the law allowed this. Why? Because they had an idol. That is mammon, money. And Jesus tells us we can only serve one master, either God or money. So why did their conscience allow them to do this? Because they are spiritually dead. Our bodies are a temple of the living God. The question that Holy Spirit convicts us of during our pruning season is, what have we idolized? It could be money, but it could also be coming in agreement with the lie of the enemy in another area. Where, uh, you know, uh, for example, I'm giving my studies more importance, I'm giving my friends more importance, I'm giving my family more importance. That could be an idol. And at that time, Holy Spirit comes and tells us, hey, what about us? What about our time? You have invested so much in this thing that you forgot about me. And he calls us to him. And at that time, we may have to cut some engagements. Maybe if I'm going out um, for uh, with my friends for snack time in the evening every day, I'm going to cut that off. Not because I don't want to fellowship, but because I, re I respect my relationship with the Holy Spirit more. And he knows why I'm not supposed to go with those friends of mine. Because they are taking me away from the word of God. So those are the things that I need to stop for this season. It's a pruning season. 
now another example is that now god had given me this vision that grace would flow flood through the doors of the churches in my village but it took four long months of patience and endurance to stick the purpose that i was planted here for this sunday will be having first retreat at my house and we already have i believe 15 people signed up to come so praise god hallelujah for that but it was only because i stayed while he pruned me now four months i see i saw nothing literally nothing people would you know like come they would give hope and then they would just like leave and not uh, not take initiative at the moment i would see hope it would it would come down but at that time if i would have given up 15 people who have signed up to come would they have received would would they be receiving the word no we are blessed to be a blessing to the nation so first he blesses us how he blesses us by making us more like him he gives yes there is all the prosperity there is all the manifestation the true blessing he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus hallelujah hallelujah the most important one of it all is loving the lord with all our heart all our soul all our mind and loving our neighbor as ourselves so because even in this in the face of the rejection i could believe his word i stayed firm and i said if you said it you'll do it just and my prayer would be keep me yielded in obedience and obedience to god's word is key in discipleship that's why pruning leads to discipled it builds discipline okay so the second point is withering brings destruction but pruning brings refinement withering brings destruction but pruning brings refinement can one rotten apple rot all the other apples in the basket yes yes definitely so you come in contact with a person who always speaks negative what did they do plant the seeds because words are seeds of ungodly things in your heart and mind sometimes for refinement separation is necessary now let's read to understand this yeah console i can read verse 15 and 16 when he had made a whip of cords he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers as money and overturned the tables and he said to those who sold doves take these things away do not make my father's house a house of merchandise then his disciples yes, yes we'll just wait that thank you okay angry jesus <laughs> <laughs> but it's not scared uh, of because this is the righteous and holy anger that we also need to possess meaning the moment we notice anything that's taking us away from god we need to speak to that spirit the word of god because let me tell you jesus is the word so every time you speak his name and rebuke these spirits that are coming to steal the word this is exactly how they feel they feel like they are being whipped and they have to get out the moment you speak the word of god and say the name of jesus they are whipped and i can stay on this verse all day but we don't have that long i guess but refinement is a process of removing unwanted materials so have you seen a um or experienced riding a bicycle without wheels first time when you ride a bicycle without the wheels when your parents removed it 
why did they remove the wheels so that you can maintain the balance yes and it was an obstruction in your growth now you went from crawling to walking to running to riding a bicycle with wheels but now you need to grow to another level so pruning also elevates us to another level and to elevate old things need to go so they removed these wheels which was stunting or obstructing you to freely enjoy the ride and find the balance to ride the bicycle now you may have fallen and it will be painful but did you give up learning no in the same way we have to be angry at anything that takes us away from the father not at people at spirits so what does it do it helps us grow in our relationship with him now our spirits are renewed and righteous but for that righteous nature to flow through our soul we need to drive off old thinking sometimes also people who are worldly i've had um friends uh my friends are come okay they are completely worldly and the lord told me no 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 talking to anyone so i had to stop like even uh when i initially came into the world i couldn't speak one word out not even to my parents because they were also so worldly now thank you jesus praise the lord that they are also into the world that is why the retreats and everything are happening so it was their pruning season also praise god so i had to let go of those things now they are very dear to me they are my best friends for years i know them letting go of them was hard but i knew i was not growing in my relationship with god it was stunting it was obstructing my grow in my relationship with god so what takes precedence is whatever prompts you propels you to grow in the relationship with god and whatever stunts or obstructs you you let it go let it go for the season because those friends now i may not be able to speak to them the word because i tried and they just you know snapped at me but i can pray for them i'm not angry with them i want them to come to the word and i believe by faith they have amen <laughs> praise god so yeah you can read verse 17 concern yes then his disciples remembered that it was written zeal for your house has eaten me up praise god okay so now withering causes us to fall away but pruning makes us zealous for god yes priya okay so i want to share something on this particular point sorry for cutting you no 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 please go ahead i'm sorry i did not ask <laughs> yeah so you know like currently i am in an assignment like for example this place of study you know yeah. god has put me here as i was saying so while i had a routine before i joined my masters where i would you know use all my time as much as possible in doing many things in the kingdom of god the holy spirit just guided me telling me to you know withdraw from certain things like for example you know i used to take a lot of helpline calls because i had a lot of time and i could minister to people i could guide them but holy spirit you know just gave me an insight saying that now that i would be busy with work my first priority should be giving my 100% there why yeah. so that the anointing in me will attract people to know christ okay the way things you know the way the lord works things in my life should draw them towards what is this you know that is the first priority and yeah. another thing i realized was see when you're ministering to another person you cannot minister out of you know when you're burnt out and you're frustrated 
like you were saying you were, you were mentioning yeah. about it you have to be filled now what i realized is now when i am going there this place where i am in it's definitely out of my comfort zone why because there are people who don't know the word i am amidst them and there is a lot of things happening around okay and if i come back home and i you know minister to people on the helpline now what is going to happen to me will i be f- filled or will i be drained 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 right so yes. holy spirit told me just withdraw from this for the time being because i am training you for something better so that's where you know like learning to be led by the holy spirit there are many things that may look good but it's not about doing the good thing rather it's about doing the right thing and that is the pruning and the withering you know little yes. bit in on it thank you jesus yes, thank that's you perfect. jesus that was beautiful that actually um reminded me of another uh, like i was studying this about pruning on of plants and everything and then one point about pruning is that um you can only prune a branch that has first already bo- bore fruit in a different season so the branch grows the plant the seed is sown the plant grows the branch grows it bears fruit and then you prune the branches so that for the next season it's prepared and ready so like you said right in one season you were ministering taking helpline calls that was for your for and you were bearing fruits now it's time to bear more fruits in a different area so you have to let that go temporarily when he wants you there he will take you there he will prune you to go there and be better better minister of his word to the over there so here you are getting practical one on one example one on one um opportunity to learn to grow to give the word and when you take that experience over there how much more fruitful will be that be yes a lot Oh Lord, praise God, praise God, and that comes. Ah, uh, that brings us to this point. Actually, being zealous for the Lord. So the third point is withering causes us to fall away, but pruning makes us zealous for God, makes us passionate for Him. You know, without zeal or passion for God, we fall off. Now, do you remember what happens to the second type of seed that foil falls on the rocky ground? it dries up with us away <laughs> yes praise god so the person receives the word with great joy but the moment opposition or persecution comes they fall away mm. without passion that is what happens now passion which is fueled by the love of god not by doing works for god if you if you are driven by the passion for doing works for god you will soon be caught up in the work and um, you won't be passionate for the word for the relationship now that's another kind of withering as well so we have to be careful what kind of passion are we driven by what is our passion in this season is it knowing the love of god growing in our relationship with him is it allowing him to first fill us with his love and then from the overflow we pour into others now remember you cannot pour if you are not overflowing god god does not want that god wants you to be overflowing and he wants you to pour out from the overflow so that is what the pruning does it helps us allows us to make space to make room for the things of god of his word of his teaching of his love of his he the holy spirit like uh, the the conversations that i have with the holy spirit i'm telling you i don't uh, first holy spirit was like a uh, he didn't exist I'm like okay i know holy spirit but it does not exist exist now i'm sitting right here like even though i'm sitting on my bed i know he's right here with me in person 
I can't see him, but I know his presence is with me. So that is the point that we go to when we grow in our relationship with God. Praise God. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Consola, do you want to praise God? Do you want to, uh, would anyone like to add anything here? Yes, um, yes. Just one small thing yeah, that we can only pour if we are overflowing. That's a really, that's a really important point. That you know, if we are not filled up with God's word, then you know we're lacking that experience that God really wants to fill us with. And it's like we cannot experience without us actually cooperating with God and the Holy Spirit. So like God needs us to respond to his love that he has already, you know, shown us. Yes. Amen. Praise God. You know, because if you try to pour from your cup, what happens is you start getting empty. And when you start getting empty, what yeah. takes uh, root is irritation. What takes root is mm-hmm. anger, bitterness. So without being full, if you try to pour, you will obviously bless that person, but you don't know to the same person that you're pouring out so much love. But because you're pouring out from your cup and not from the overflow, that same person might experience your, um, you know, irritation, your experience your uh, anger, your jealousy, all of these things. I have, I have had that with my family. I tried to, you know, when I came uh, from the retreat, I was so full, so charged up. And I wanted to immediately, you know, give them, do this, do that. And then when they would not, I would get so irritated. What I realized was I was not overflowing. I was full, but I was not overflowing. So then Mm. Holy Spirit was like, can you please just sit with me? (laughs) Let me (laughs) fill you first. (laughs) So another whole month, I didn't say anything to them. I just prayed and prayed and, you know, uh, prayed, learned from him. And uh, now they themselves put on teachings of uh, Papa's teachings and they sit. I don't have to tell anything. Praise God. Yes. Just to mention when Helena says Papa, she means uh, Brother Johnson. Yes. <laughs> For those who don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's Brother Johnson. No, Praise no. God. Okay. Uh, yeah, do you want to read, uh, continue reading verse 18 to 22? You can read. Yeah. So the Jews answered and said to him, What signs do you show to us since you do these things? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up. Then the Jews said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple. And will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. Therefore, when he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this to them. And they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Amen. Praise God. And the fourth point is withering takes rebuilding, which demands greater sacrifice. But pruning takes building up correctly with small sacrifices. The church was withered. Now, why was it withered? Because when the law was given, It was to show us the standard of God, what is acceptable, what is not acceptable. But because of the rebellion, the rebellious nature, because of the sin nature that we have, rebellion was one of was one of the traits. So the people they went they fell away from that word. They did not obey God. They murmured. They made Now, God gave them 613 commandments. But they added their own laws. 
they depended on their performance and what does did it cost it costs it cost us a huge payment like that sacrifice that payment we were supposed to make with our life because the penalty for sin is that but that payment our creator he became creation so we could did not have to pay we couldn't pay to make us debt free he bound himself he went to the cross he died on the third day when he rose again he didn't just die he didn't just rise up himself but he rose us all to life when we let things burn us with anger jealousy competition performance what we are doing is defiling our temple god lives in us and when we allow these things when we open doors to these things now not everything is conscious but some things for example uh, my sister she was uh, listening to secular music and she was getting like she's in the word but uh, listening to this secular music she would she would get irritated quickly she would get angry quickly and i was like what is happening what are you doing and then i found out that all of this and i explained it to her and then now it's been i think uh, a week it's it's more she's more calmer but you see she opened doors like unknowingly she opened doors she did not have that wisdom but once given because she applied it now there is change there is pruning there is refining pruning is preparation before the due season of bearing fruit so in pruning you might have to sacrifice your desires but what what's the fruit that you will gain is purpose you might have to sacrifice your earthly ambition but what you gain is eternal life in Christ Jesus you know one unique thing about the wine i was wondering why god said wine i am the true wine we talk about the sap do you know what the sap uh when the when when the branch is pruned the sap that flows through is called sap bleed now this does not happen in any other plant only the wine sap is termed as sap bleed when a branch is pruned the sap flows out and it's also called bleeding of the sap many might think it's bad but that blood prepares the ground for the branch to bear fruit providing natural nourishment and the bleeding awakens the plant from its quiescent dormant inactive state in winters the plants go to sleep the sap flow, the sap flow stops the the wine it's inactive there's no motion there's no movement we put it to sleep the withered the dead the um you know in uh, when jesus goes to uh, the little girl what does he tell the people jairus's daughter that she's only asleep even in john 11 11 he says lazarus is only asleep yes yes our savior for three days had to fall in the arms of that sleep so that we could be alive we could be awake and have eternal life in him pruning uh, enables god to awaken the parts of us that we have put to sleep so when the season comes we can flourish bearing fruits of the kingdom of god and what are the fruits of the kingdom can we go to galatians 5 verse 22 to 23 quickly please go yes would you like to read yeah but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace 
long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such there is no law. Amen. Praise God. So this is what pruning does. It brings when we are when we stay stand firm in the pruning season, these are the fruits that we bear. When it's time to bear fruits, when the season of bearing fruits come, we bear the fruit of love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control, which does not bind us into any law. Praise God. Would anyone like to add anything here? Uh, there's another verse that says uh, by St. Paul in Corinthians, you know, yes. uh, which says that everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. That means yes. that, uh, like, you know, as you mentioned, the example of secular music. Now, if you see music in itself is not a sin, okay? Yes. But it can open doors to sin. So what is very important is to pay attention to the, you know, the yeah. uh, words, the lyrics. Like I can give my example. Okay. I, I come from, a uh, you know, my history with music is I used to play a lot of music. I was a, fond of a lot of music, you know, before I got born again. And even after I got born again, it's not that I would not listen to music. But as I started studying more and more, in you know, the word of God, the Holy Spirit convicted me to avoid certain kinds of music. Like instead of, you know, listening to something secular, which would give my thoughts directed on that particular theme. Like suppose if it's a love song, then your thoughts go there. It's highly yeah. impossible that you listen to a music and not be affected by that. I can vouch for that. So yeah. instead of that, you listen to some worship music and when you listen to that worship music, it creates an atmosphere of praise, thanksgiving, an atmosphere of reverence for God. So that is what I wanted to add. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, that is exactly what I told her. And um, we actually uh, saw a video. If anyone wants, I can send it to them as well. If who are, you know, convicted to not uh, not listen to secular music. And uh, listening to that video, she actually understood, like, music is made for the glory of God. And anything that, you know, like, if we open doors to these things, um, what it does, it comes in our relation, between our relationship with God, hinders us away from it, makes us more uh, inclined to, inclined and open to hear the, voice of the enemy more than I can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit because uh, in the beginning she would listen to it like day and night non-stop but she stopped and I don't know why all of a sudden she started and then we, we saw the changes in her but she watched it, Holy Spirit convicted her, I told her you go and you pray about it, she prayed about it she got convicted, she only stopped it <laughs> so praise God <laughs> It has to come from a place of conviction, not a place of force. Um, and now the question is, praise God. Yes, you want to say something, Dr. Priya? No, no, continue. Okay, praise God. Okay, the question is, why does God prune us? Can we go to Proverbs um, 3.12, please? Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Would anyone like to read? For whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Just as a father, the son in whom he delights. Praise God. So it is for our correction, to build our character, to help us become more like him 
pruning is all about that now us like i said before our spirit is completely new but our mind still needs renewing so this pruning season helps us now for example if i am struggling with an area where i would get angry at certain things uh, like at certain people like why would you just act like this don't act like this and what i would do is instantly speak uh speak out like why are you like this and why are you like that but what am i doing i am speaking death over that person but one of the fruit of the spirit is self control we just saw it right so now to have that self control what is god going to do he's going to put me into situations where i have to control my tongue i have to you know bite back and say no this to instead of reacting in anger i respond and give the word saying see life and that is and the power of your tongue and those who love and those who eat it no what is it those who love it will eat it it eat, eat its fruit yeah. praise god from 8821 yes that and life find the power of your tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit for the kingdom of god it's all about fruit <laughs> today everything is about fruit <laughs> praise god praise <laughs> god oh. now when it comes what do we do when trials come what do we do can we go to romans 5 verse 3 to 4 please thank you jesus and not only that but we also glory in tribulations knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope amen praise god so what do we do in the situation we glory we rejoice we be happy and we we be joyful not happy sorry we be joyful why because these tribulations are here to produce perseverance patience in us endurance when we endure it builds our character and character builds hope praise god is our hope in whom in jesus christ that whatever it is whatever the promise is it will come but is building us up for that for example if he has promised that i'm going to own a company one day if you give me a company today i'm telling you i will not be able to handle it properly but this season am i going to waste it saying oh why is wasted blaming god like why you said it why are you not doing it or am i going to stay stand firm and say okay you're building me up to handle it what have you already given me you've given me skills can i steward it well because when you are faithful in the little he blesses you with more praise god amen praise god Praise God. Consuela, can we go to John chapter 15, please? Yes. You can read from verse 4 onwards. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me i am the vine you are the branches he who abides in me and i in him bears much fruit for without me 
you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And that's where I'd like to stop. I think that joint chapter 15 makes more sense now, right? Yes, praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this wonderful teaching. And that's the yes. title of my message. Better pruned than withered. Amen. Amen. Any questions? Anything to add? Anyone would like to add anything? Can you uh, can you explain that pruning thing again? That process. Okay, so pruning is a process to as a procedure when we cut off unwanted things or blockages from a branch of the plant which hinders its growth. Okay, anything that's obstructing our growth, our father who is the gardener will take it off. Why? Because firstly, it's an obstruction between your relationship and his, like he's... Yeah. Selena, are you speaking something? You're not audible. Praise God. Sorry, I think I got cut off. Yeah, now I can hear you. Yeah, praise God. What what did what was the last thing I said? Uh you said you, you take the unwanted things from the branch to that yes. hinders its growth. Yes, correct. So it uh, whatever obstructs our relationship with God, he will remove it. Whatever obstructs the path which he has the the purpose he has created us for, he will remove. Why? Because now all of us, I think, um, we all have a purpose in life. Some of us may have discovered it. Some of us may have not. But how do you get there? You get there one step after the other. How do you know what your purpose is? You can only know. The purpose comes vertical from God to you. It does not come horizontal. Nobody, no human can tell you what your purpose is. It yes. comes vertical. Because he has created you. He has designed you. So for that, he needs to make space so that the sap... Now, the sap is what produces, uh, gives nourishment to the branch... To produce, to actually produce that fruit. So when it okay. bleeds, what it's causing is to make that branch fertile enough to hold that fruit, to bear that fruit. It's making the branch strong. Okay. To like now you've seen branches with uh, what is a a coconut tree, right? And you see yeah. how high those coconuts are. Yes. So. If that branch is not strong, would it be able to hold it? No. No. In the same way, if your purpose is that big, 
without the pruning if you if you just grow and um, you know actually another thing about pruning is if you if it's not pruned properly right and you let it grow it grows thin and it grows weak so can a weak branch hold that coconut no no it will fall with the fruit okay. before the time okay. before that fruit even comes to uh, fruition and proper in its you know serve its purpose the branch only will cut yeah. it off so in the same way if we if he does not prune us for the purpose he has shaped us for when we go there what we do is we are not able to manage it properly and we lead people astray including with ourselves we also lead people astray shepherds especially in the kingdom of god anything that you've been like for example if you are in ministry you are responsible for shepherding the children of god according to his word but if you are not full with his word can you give it no you um there are pastors there are preachers who you know they they teach theology why are they teaching mm-hmm. theology and not being led by the spirit because they are not full they didn't stay now in initially they must be really zealous for god really you know having that passion but when that passion shifted to performance and when that mm-hmm. performance started driving them they didn't know it and now what they do is lead people astray away from god rather than close to god yeah is that make it more clear yes thank god <laughs> thank you jesus praise god any other questions anyone would like to add anything i would like to add that uh, how verse 7 says if you abide in me and my words abide in you you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you and it shows us that the when that abiding relationship is going on between us and jesus what desire we are going to actually ask is not going to be something that is worldly and if the desire is worldly and it's not glorifying god it it would show as a indicator or a sign that you're not actually abiding in jesus and that his words are not abiding in you so it's like whatever desire that you would ask god will do it as long as it aligns with his word and it it honors him and glorifies him yes amen praise god the purpose of life is purpose of our life is to bring glory to god uh is it uh can you go to isaiah 43 verse 7 yes yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. Praise God. This entire chapter is beautiful. Entire, entire chapter. But that is the purpose. Whom I have created for my glory. We are created to bring him glory. just going back to the pain part what is the purpose of pain it's also to bring him glory um so yeah. can we go to john chapter 11 verse 4 yes thank you jesus when jesus heard that he said this sickness is not unto death but for the glory of god that the son of god may be glorified through it amen praise god this is lazarus um 
But Lazarus died, right? Yeah. Was it painful? For those sisters? Yeah. For the people? For everyone, it was painful. But even that pain served a purpose to bring Jesus glory, to bring God glory. Even our pain is to bring God up, God glory. No matter what that pain is, if you find, if you hold on to the vision, the joy, the joy that is said before us, always, it's always to see the glory of God. No matter how difficult the situation is, even in death, you will have hope. Why? Because it's going to bring God glory. Amen. And a person who has truly died to himself seeks this. God's glory. Not my desires. God's glory. When that becomes your focus, pain fleets. Pain, pain fleets. It really, it just goes. Uh, you won't even know when that season came and when it went away. Yes, that's so true. Jesus. Amen. Jesus kept his focus on the joy that was set before him. Yes, it was his resurrection and re reconciliation back to the Father. Yes, it was our salvation, but it what is what was the whole what what did it do? It brought such glory and honor to God that it is nothing, nothing by our works that we are saved, only by believing in the name of Jesus and what he has done. We are saved. And every time, every time a person believes in Jesus and comes home, every time a person repents, heavens rejoice. Angels are singing. Heavens are having a party. But what is that party? That party is not some anything like our earthly parties. That party is singing Hallel, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Amen. They are singing that. They're bringing glory to God. Praise God. When when I was fallen, when I came to the world, I was into the, from, from this world. But when I repented and decided to give my life to Jesus. The heavens rejoiced. But what happened in that rejoicing? God, God, glory. Something that he did 2023 years ago. 2000, over 2000 years ago, not 2023. Over 2000 years ago. He's getting glory today. The creation was created, I don't even know how many years ago. But even <laughs> today, it's giving him glory. When you look at the creation, you say, wow, God, you're so good. You're giving him glory. You're blessing his name. That is the purpose of our life. Bringing him glory. Praise God. Praise God. Yes. Any more questions? Anyone would like to add anything? Chris is quiet today. <laughs> <laughs> and listening, okay. <laughs> Cleaning the house and listening, okay. No problem. <laughs> Praise God. Okay. Then would you like to make yes. the closing prayer, Consuela? Uh, Faustina said she'll do the closing prayer. Okay, okay. Praise God. Yeah, praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Father, and the God. Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this wonderful session that Sister Selena shared to us, God. We pray that all of us will go through our pruning with diligence and perseverance, Lord. Pray that each of us will want to be pruned instead of withered, Lord Jesus. 
and we pray that we all abide in you. I make this prayer in your mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for seeing us.